Hello, this is Altbeer, and I am going to walk you through how to build um, this year's um, badge life offering that I came up with called the Homecoming Badge. Um, this consists of two parts, a corsage and a boutonniere. Um, this is the kit that um, many of you will get, and we'll open it up, and we will actually build this badge. So you can use this as an instructional video, along with the instructions that are on the website. Um, so let's get started. So we have the kit. We'll open this guy up. And see what we got inside. So if you saw my um, badge reveal video, you would have seen that there's several things in this kit. Namely, we have the Corsage PCB. Then we have a bag of big components for it, a bag of small components for it, batteries, lanyard, sticker, and then this last bag is the um, boutonniere, um, and it has a small bag inside. So we're going to set that aside and some of these other things that we don't need. And we're going to focus on the things in this bag. Um, now the uh, the website um, that I stood up has instructions for this. Let me uh, see if I can share that. Um, it's called uh, homecoming.altbeer.us. Uh, where's display? There we go. And uh, on this site, um, I broke out the corsage and the boutonniere instructions separately. So we have, uh, this is the corsage and it goes through exactly um, what to do. So soldering steps, non-soldering steps, the whole nine yards. But we're gonna walk through it here in this uh, video. So, turn that off and let us get going. So, the first, th this bag has all of the, um, the larger components, so I'm gonna set it aside for now and we'll start with the, the smallest bag first. This has all of our teeny tiny components that we want to build the badge, and sometimes they get stuck in there. All right, so let's see what we got. We have the four pin LEDs, the addressable LEDs. There should be four of them. And then we have the three pin LEDs. There should be four of those. And we have 12 of the uh, resistors that are the five or 470 ohm. We've got one resistor that's um, 22k ohm. A little on-off switch. Some capacitors. And a little transistor in this thing. So um, I always suggest that um, you start with uh, the hardest part first, and that's going to be our transistor because it is a surface mount uh, component. Um, but we are going to mount it um, using hand soldering because most people won't have surface mount setups at the Hardware Hacking Village at the con. So first thing is to get it out of here. And this thing is very tiny, so we want to be careful not to lose it. And you can see it just kind of dropped there as I tore it open. So I can throw that away. And I will get a little tweezer. And actually, I have a microscope that I can use to make this easier to see. So you can see what's going on. Where is it? Let's see if I can focus that a little bit. Yeah, I think that's about as good as it's getting. But you can see the, the pad and the transistor, and right now it's upside down. So we'll flip that over. And we're going to want this guy, if I can get him in the right side. So you'll see on one side the, the legs are, are towards that side, so it's easy to tell if it's flipped over. And once it's flipped in the right way, um, 
there's only one way it'll go onto the pads. So let's go ahead and solder this guy. And the way I do this, just kind of line him up so where he's right on the pads where we want him. Get my solder, get my iron, make sure it's hot. Tin it a little bit. Now I put just a little bit of solder on the tip and then I'm going to hold down this part in place while I touch that solder to one of the legs. And once I get it good and on there, then that piece is solid. So then I can do the other two legs the same way. take a look at that yeah, and it's not a great looking solder but it's one that's manageable it'll work let's see if we can get this under the microscope for you all to see better bring it closer and then zoom in microscope is finicky I haven't used it much in videos before but you can see the the legs are soldered in place exactly where we want them so it wasn't that hard it's not ideal to to hand solder surface mount components but it works in a pinch and I'm not going to use that microscope anymore that's a pain all right so now we have our um, power protection transistor on there. Um, there are two other pieces to the power circuit, the power protection circuit, and that's our 22k ohm resistor and the on off switch. So we'll go ahead and finish this out by getting those on there. Now we want those to go on with the body of the unit on the back of the badge. And so this one goes right here in the place labeled R1. I'm going to pull the legs tight and you can see I just kind of bent the legs out a little that way it's not going to fall out on me. And then this guy I'm going to put here and it doesn't matter which way you flip it this way or that way um, because it's just a two position switch and what makes it on off is the traces on the badge so whichever way works for you it will work so the first thing we do is hit these resistor legs I don't think my iron is quite hot yet it's being finicky. There we go. Too much on that one. Alright, and then for the on off switch, you'll notice as I move it back and forth, it's kind of wiggling. It um, doesn't stay flush. So, what I like to do is just no matter what position it's in, we're going to hit one of these pins with solder and then while it's heated I'm looking underneath it to make sure it's at a 90 degree angle and then I let it go. Now when that cools he should be close to 90 degrees. Yeah close enough. So we'll get the rest of them on there perfect. All right. And so now we trim, we want to get close to flush, 
but not damaging the solder joint as we cut these guys. So that means you're going to have a little bit of a nub there. Don't try to cut it flat with the board because then you're going to damage the solder joint that you just made. All right, so then there's our power protection circuit. It's in place, on, off, good to go. All right, so the next thing I like to do is to, to hit the other resistors because they're quick, they're easy, there's 12 of them. Um, I think there's 12, yeah, 12. Um, we'll just knock them out real quick. So pull the paper off, and then we'll just start sticking them into the... PCB and once again all these resistors are going to go onto the back of the PCB into the little resistor marked holes they're little, little rectangle holes drawn on the board and after each one I'm just kind of bending the legs out so that it doesn't fall out and it stays with the body of the resistor flush to the PCB. Pop that one in. So if you are getting one of these at DEF CON, um, I will be hanging around the hardware hacking village helping people that have issues soldering them, especially that tiny um, transistor. I'll have a quick and easy way to put that on for people using solder paste and a hot air gun that I'll be bringing. Um, but yeah, it's not that difficult. I know. people that haven't done surface mount components um, but do solder might get nervous about it. it it's not that bad so I'm just popping all of these in at once that way we can solder them all at once and that'll make it much quicker to complete because there's a lot of little components on this guy that we got to deal with so any place we can save time we want to normally do this to music but YouTube has been really nasty about takedown letters or forcing you to accept advertising if they catch even the faintest snippet of a song playing in the background so I figured for this video we'll just go without music oops knocked one out but it sounds kind of like dead air it's weird all right, so now the only word of advice with this is because we are soldering on the front of the board, be careful not to hit the white silk screen with the iron because um, it will brown it and that'll look pretty bad. And this badge is, is mainly about the art, so we want to try to preserve the art. So be careful when you're soldering near the silk screen.
like I said, these go fairly quick. The, um, the resistors have really thin legs, which the thinness means they heat up really quick. And when you're soldering, you know you want to hit both the pad and the leg. So having thin legs that heat up quick makes it go really quick. When you're doing those thick header pins on the pie, you'll see it goes a bit slower because it takes a while for those pins to heat up compared to these pins. I mean, it's not a huge difference, but it's noticeable. Okay. I did those already. All right, so that's all of them. And so once again, we trim. Put my glasses back on so I don't lose an eye, but I always tend to hold the pins of the things I'm trimming that way. They don't go flying everywhere. So we'll trim these up and then we'll move on to the next. quite close enough because they were too close to each other. All right, so that's good. We got all of that stuff out of the way. So our next thing that I usually do is um, start doing the front side components now because there's um, not much else to go on the back. Um, so the first thing that I'll probably do is these um, uh, three pin uh, LEDs. And these three pins, um, we want to align it with the markings on the, the back of the board. So um, there's a mark on one side that indicates where the flat side of the LED goes. And let me see if the camera can pick this up. But the LED has a flat side. And you know what? This is microscope time. So. So you can see in the microscope, see if I can get it in here and turn it around, the, the brim of the hat, if you will, has a chunk out of it on one side. So you can see it there on the left. Um, as I go back and forth, you see the reflection. That little flat notch that's out of the side of it, um, which you can see when you're, you're looking at it um, with the naked eye a lot better than on camera. Um, that is how we're going to tell the alignment on both these and the other type of LEDs. So we want to take that flat mark and align it where it says the flat mark goes here, which in our case means from the front it'll be left, on the back it'll be on the right. And another way to tell is once you've looked at the, the flat mark and then you look at the pins, 
you can see that while the middle pin is the longest, the pin that's near the flat side of this LED is the next longest pin. The short pin is the non-flat side. So from now on, we don't have to look at every LED's hat. We can just look at the pins. And I'm bending those out a little bit so that they stay in place. And once again, we're going to do all of these at once. And so once again, I can tell that this pin right here is corresponding with the flat side. And so we'll go ahead and put this in here. And bend it out. And because we're going to have um, LED diffuser covers on here, um, I'm pushing these all the way down as far close to the PC PCB as they'll go. Um, past the little stops that are normally on the, the legs. Um, because we want these guys really close to the PCB, that way the um, LED cover that's a flower will uh, fit over it. away because my arm keeps sticking into them. Definitely get lots of little trimmings on this badge. So now what I'm going to do is lay it to where all four are down and solder them. Use my little trick by soldering one pin and then adjust it to make sure it's where I want as far as like a 90 degree angle. And once I get it there, then I finish up the other two pins just like I did with the power. I should move up a bit so it's better on camera. This one needs to move back a little. Okay, those look good. Yep, so we got all our LEDs in place. They look nice. And so now we're going to cut our pins. And once again, you don't want to get so close that you damage the solder connections. So if you see that one that I just did, there's still lumps there, and that's fine, but that way it protects the solder joint. You cut it completely flat to the board, chances are you could have problems with that solder joint in the future. Oh, 
Okay, and so the next part would probably be the ceramic discs because they're going to go in between the two LEDs. And the reason that I uh, decided to put these guys on the front of the board like this is because they act as kind of a, a light blocker because the two LEDs are going to be shining light that's being diffused by the 3D printed housing. This kind of stops them from bleeding into each other in that middle section between the flower and the leaves. So it's probably not strictly necessary that they go on the front, but I tried it both ways and I think it makes enough of a difference that we'll just kind of put it on the front and then it gets hidden inside of uh, the flower too. So you're not worried about it breaking off because unlike the resistors, these guys don't lie completely flat on the board. They kind of stick up a little bit. All right, so let's get these guys soldered on. And because we have that other set of LEDs on there, these are not getting crushed by the mat. Um, they're actually hanging loose, being supported up in the air by the LED heads. It's another reason to do these after those LEDs. And the reason to do them before the second set of LEDs is it's easier to get to these now where once that other set of legs are in there, it's a little more difficult to get to them. All right, so let's cut these guys. All right, that looks pretty nice. All right, and so now it's time for our last set of LEDs. These are the four pin. These are the addressable LEDs. Um, once again, they're gonna have a, uh, a flat side. Um, and in this case, the uh, flat side is nearest to the longest pin. It's like where the longest pin is on um, this left side, that's where the flat side is. So that's what I'm going to use for a reference um, as we print or as we uh, solder these onto here. And then on the board itself, you'll see that um, I have it aligned to where the flat side's going in the same direction as the other LED is always to the left on the back, I mean, to the right on the back or to the left on the front. And so let us get this in place. Push it down all the way, bend a couple of pins out, and that looks good. And we'll do that the rest of the times around the wheel. Other than the surface mount component for the um, power protection circuit, these LEDs are probably going to be the next hardest thing to solder for someone new to soldering. Just because the pads are so close together, Oh, 
So if you can see, the, these um, solder pads are very close together, so it's very easy to bridge them together, and you need to take care not to do that. And I'll show you my trick for, for doing that as we solder these. So the way I do make sure that we don't bridge these connections is start with one on either side, and I'm hitting it from one side, getting both the pad and the, the pin. But then the solder, instead of pushing it against it like I normally do, I'm just going to kind of dab it in there. Just a tiny bit at a time until I get just the right amount and I know it's not going over. Same with the next one. Just kind of control the amount of solder going on there. That way it's not so much it leaves the pad because that's where you get the bridge is when you get too much solder and it leaves its pad and onto the next pad. And so you can see how that looks, hopefully. It's hard on these cameras. All right, so we'll do the same thing for the other LEDs. Good. Angle this a little differently because this light is awful over there. As you're soldering these together, remember it's not about speed. You want the quality to be there. So take the time to inspect your work. Like I just inspected a joint that didn't have enough solder and now it looks better. But yeah, if you do that every time, then you end up with a better product because of it. people try to rush and that's how mistakes get made and you end up spending more time fixing the mistakes than if you would have just took the time in the first place to do it right Make sure they're all covered. Yep. And so now we just trim. pins are a little thicker than the resistors and the uh, capacitors so it may take a little force to get them to pop off of there all right so now we got those on there get rid of my trash all right 
So next we're going to deal with the Raspberry Pi. So this is, because that was the last of the components from the small bag. So this is in the other bag of big components. We want to take out the Raspberry Pi and the header pins. So this Raspberry Pi Pico it's going to have some tape on it because I opened every one of these to load firmware and my code on them. So you shouldn't have to deal with code unless you want to. And then what we want to do is put the header pins on here. Now this is a 40 pin header pin um, length and we want two sets of 20. So what I do is kind of pop it on there and then just use pliers, but you can use your fingers too to break it off right there where we want it broke. And then we put the other end in here. And you'll notice this is not the normal way you would put header pins in something. Normally they'd go the other way like this. That way you get the nice long pin going down. But I'm purposely putting them in with the long side of the header pins up and the short side down. This way, when we go to solder it into the PCB, we won't have to trim the header pins off the front of the PCB. It'll make it a nice clean finish and not having to trim all that. And it has the added advantage of you'll have these little jacks on the back. I mean, you could trim them off the back, but if you leave them, you could always get um, little female jumper wires to hook into this and you can play with it on external stuff to the badge if you want. It makes it a easy way to connect to any of the pins on the Pico and I'm not using all of the pins for the, the badge so fun can be had there. Now another thing to notice is you see how these pins can wiggle all back and forth and we want them nice and straight so I usually just stick them into a breadboard. Now, if you're going to use a breadboard like this, you want to make sure when you stuck them down that none of the pins are sticking up because sometimes these, um, these metal pins can slide back and forth inside that black piece and you don't want one sticking up. Uh, that shouldn't be. So that looks good. And now we're going to solder these header pins in place. And then after that, we can attach it to the PCB. This is one of those things where I was telling you it takes a little longer to heat up. That's the example compared to the resistor, which took my solder right away. That one took a little while. And so I usually get the four corners first just to make sure that the header pins are not going to move around on me while I am soldering them all. go and finish the rest of them. This is a little time consuming, but definitely needs to be done. That way we can attach this guy to the board because this is all of the brains of the of the board. It's going to tell it what LEDs to light when and how to light them. And uh, this. Um, the firmware that I loaded on this is um, CircuitPython, um, which is um, similar to MicroPython, but it's um, software that Adafruit uh, puts out. I really like it, and uh, 
it makes it very simple to deal with code on these because if you plug it into a device um, via the USB connector it's just going to mount like a mass storage device like any kind of USB stick and you're going to see it used to be main PY is what was on there but now they they use code PY as the initial file and so the code PY file has all of your code in that file and you can just use any text editor to update it and as soon as that file gets changed the firmware knows to reload the board and it starts running your new firmware so no tool chains or anything like that you can just start playing with code right away which is why I like it it's easy for people to get into coding the, for hardware that haven't been before. side done. And for those um, who will invariably leave comments about my posture during soldering yes I get back pain from this yes I know my posture is bad this is the way I solder I can't seem to change it doesn't matter what kind of chair I have <laughs> I always end up in this bent over position it's just a given but if you are able to solder while maintaining posture more power to you that'll be less back pain come on get on there I think it goes without saying, but I'll probably say it anyway in case somebody needs to hear it. But as you're soldering these header pins on, um, be careful not to touch the soldering iron to other things on the board um, because you could actually mess with some of the circuitry or the components that are on the front of the board and desolder them or bridge them. It's something that can be easily avoided by just sticking to the pin area where we're putting the header pins on. But mistakes happen. I ruined one of these boards simply because I wasn't paying attention, was talking to someone while I was soldering, Iron got left in the wrong place on the board for too long. <laughs> it happens. All right. Okay, so we will let that cool for a while before we pull this out. So I'm going to do that and where did my glasses go? Oh, they're right here. All right, I'm going to grab something over here real quick. Pop this guy out. Uh, 
All right. So that yeah, looks good. Okay, so now what we want to do is put it onto the PCB. So we want to line it up to where, if you see these um, three pins on the Pi, we have the three um, sections on the, the PCB as well. We're not actually using those, so that's why there's no pins in there. But I want to line up the holes. Still a little warm. Okay, I'm gonna... That's why it's best to let it fully cool before you try to insert it, because things expand when they're hot, and this guy is not wanting to cooperate with me, because he's still a little hot. get a different plier and bend one of these into place. Alright, that did it. One of the pins just bent when I pulled it out of the breadboard, so I had to get a bigger plier to bend it back into place. But that works. So, what we got is it's laid in place here. And we can see the pins are sticking out here, and that's what we're going to solder. And there's just enough of the pin sticking out to solder um, because of the way we, we aligned it. And so we shouldn't have to trim anything. So I'm going to try to lay this flat without it popping out. Good. And then we will solder away. Even though there's just this little nub sticking out, it's still that thick header pin, and so we still have to wait a second for it to heat up before the solder starts to stick to it. And those header pins are very thick. They are actually very... Uh, time consuming to trim if we did need to trim it that's another reason other than aesthetics to not want to trim these pins because it's a pain in the ass to cut them all especially when you're doing 20 on each side that's 40 pins to cut no thank you if I can avoid it now while I'm doing this I'm taking care to try to only hit the solder pad and the pin with the soldering iron because we are in the heart of the artwork here and we don't want scorch marks in that nice white silk.
almost done with this side and then we'll get the other side going nearing the soldering finish line with this guy just have a couple more things after this mainly the battery connectors but those are pretty easy Almost there. All right, done. Okay, so that guy is all soldered in place. He's on the board nicely. Ooh, that's still hot. <laughs> Let that cool for a minute. All right, so with that done, um, the only thing left to um, solder on are the battery holders. And so once again, that's in our big pack. And there's two battery holders. There's a single and a double for AAA batteries. And they're taped together. So let's remove that tape. The tape was mainly there to protect the pins during shipment. Because these guys got nice long pins. All right. So we're going to put those on and solder them. And with the um, double uh, AAAs, it's really easy because they can only really go in one way. They are going on the back of the board. But yeah, you can't really get the alignment wrong because there's only one way to do it. So we'll do that one first. There's just two pins. But these are thick pins, kind of like the header pins. So I'm going to take it a minute to heat up. This one got a little too much solder on it, so a little trick I have when I get too much solder on something like this is we're going to heat it up. And instead of using a wick or anything like that, I'm just going to bang it. And you can see there's the extra solder I don't need. And the rest of the solder that's there looks fine now. Good. So let's trim those pins. <laughs> and those 
Those are tough like header pins. All right, so that's done. We'll get the other one on here. Now with this um, battery connector, it has two pins, one on either end, which means you could potentially put it in the wrong way. So make sure that you line it up with the picture on the board. You get the spring on this side, your positive is on this side, has a plus right in there. So this is the way we want to insert it. And then we'll flip it over and solder these. Just final inspection we got all our resistors on we got the power protection we got these on so we're done with the soldering part of this badge and now we're going to move on to the additional assembly um, and for this one we're going to go back again to this big bag again let's just dump out our components here and see what we have so we got these four flowers we got a bag of screws and a tiny screwdriver. So not all of these screws are for the flowers. Some of them are for the battery holders, which we're going to put on. So the self-tapping screws, the ones that have the pointy ends, are for the flowers. Move those over here. And where is, there's my other one. And so these flathead screws and nylocks are for the battery connectors. So I'm not gonna use Teeny Tiny, although he will work. He's not the easiest screwdriver to work with. So we're gonna put a screw through there and then while I hold it here, I'm gonna put the nylock on this end and just kind of screw it in place while I hold it finger tight. And it's not gonna tighten all the way that way, so I'm gonna take my pliers to hold it in place now and screw it down the rest of the way. Whoops. <laughs> Didn't damage anything, good. <laughs> all right, so that's nice and tight. We'll get the other one on there. So now we got our battery connector in. Now before we put on the flowers, we should go ahead and test that everything is soldered down right, because otherwise it's a pain to pop a flower off and fix something. So let's go ahead and see if we can open up this package of batteries. like we got a problem with one of our LEDs so looks like all of these worked except this guy so I'm going to check out his circuit real quick make sure I put them in correctly these 
batteries out. Look good. Yeah, all the other bits look good. We'll try her again. And that did it. One of the solder joints was um, not good because I cut too close. <laughs> so that thing I warned you all to do, not to do, I did. So you can see that the LEDs are quite bright, but we're gonna make them shine a little more outward with the LED covers. So let's put that in place next. And I'll just leave the batteries in for this. So the way that I do the LED covers is this bottom most hole I'm going to put a screw in there, hold it straight, and line it up with the hole that's on the 3D printed center. Screw it in. And then that should automatically line up the hole on the top. And so we can screw that in. All right, and then we'll just do that three more times, and we're done. tiny screws and big fat fingers do not like to work well together. I know this is a long video and a lot of it is just watching me do things like screw stuff together. So I'm hoping that this helps somebody down the road trying to put these things together and struggling. They can just stop on this particular part that they're having trouble with and be able to see how I did it. So I was going to do this as a live stream initially, but then I thought, well, that's kind of a long live stream of me just kind of <laughs> putting stuff together and it might not work at the end, which would be very disappointing. At least here with a recording, if it doesn't work at the end, I can record this whole thing again and you never know. <laughs> All right, let's take a look. Ah uh, yes, that's beautiful. Turn this light off. Ah uh, yes, that turned out perfect. Okay, so now that we have our working badge, the only piece left for the corsage is the lanyard and then his friend the boutonniere, which compared to this has much less soldering to do. So we'll clip these on there. And then for those not aware what this guy is, it's an adjuster so you can make it longer, shorter as you need to to 
position it around your neck perfectly. All right, so corsage done. What do we have left? We got a boot in here. Let's build this guy. This guy has a lot less parts. He's going to be pretty easy. So what do we have? Well, we got a battery, battery holder, a flower, a PCB, and a little bag of parts. is in the little bag of parts. Well, we got screws that we'll need later. So we have three 47 ohm resistors, three variable resistors, an on-off switch, a brooch clip, which we'll use towards the end, two different LEDs, another four pin, but this one's not addressable. It's a common cathode RGB LED. And then we have these two resistors um, for the green LED, we have to choose whether we want to go with a 100 ohm resistor or a 220 ohm resistor. Um, the, the choice is just about the brightness of the green LED. So for argument's sake, uh, I guess I'll pick the 100. Let's see how that goes, because I built a bunch of 220s the other day. So the first thing I like to do on this is the resistors because they're the easiest so this guy the one that we made the choice about goes into r4 and then the 47 ohms are going to go around it r1 2 and 3. So we got all four in there. So now we're going to solder them up. Boutonniere is not as flashy as the Corsage, and I mean that literally. These LEDs will not flash. <laughs> They're really just, the one is a solid color, green, and the other one has red, green, and blue, and you can use the variable resistors to dial in what color you want it to display and then it stays that color. So just like at a real homecoming, the boutonniere is a lot less flashy than the corsage. But um bump <laughs> All right, so those look good. Got to cut them. Oh, that's why I still got a piece of metal from the last cut I did. Like, why is that not working? <laughs> those guys on there so then next oh and I should have told you they're um, 
the website that has the corsage instructions also has the boutonniere instructions step by step just like the corsage so you can follow along um, with those instructions all right so once we get all of those um, uh, on there I'm really just going to finish up components that go on the back um, first um, and then uh, we'll flip around to the LEDs on the front but with the back components I'm going to try to do them in size order so I'll get the switch first because it doesn't stand up as tall as these guys do so that will make it harder to do the switch later if I do the variable resistors first so we'll get the switch on there Just lose my glasses. Yes, I did. Oh, all right. And just like we did on the switch last time, we're just going to hit one pin and then take a look at where that's at. Kind of hit it again as we adjust to 90 degrees. And eh, not quite 90, but close enough doesn't have to be perfect okay that goes in there pretty good kind of angled a little bit in but that's better than if it was angled out. If it was angled out, I'd probably correct it. All right, let's get these guys trimmed up. All right, so next we will do the variable resistors and they're gonna go on the back of the badge. So if you put them on the back of this badge, there's really not a way to put them in wrong because they got three pins. So that means you're gonna put two on top and one on bottom in each of these designated spots. And if you do that, then they'll be in the right alignment. trickiest part is to get them to stay as we flip them over and I found that this battery works perfect for that because I can now hold pressure on them while I flip it over and then slide that out and now I have them ready to be soldered and once again we're soldering on the front of the board um, near the art so we want to take care not to hit the white silk screen art because that'll leave scorch marks on it I'll just hit the middle pin on each one initially to make sure that they're all held in place Okay, that looks good. And those are in place, nice and even. 
And those little nubs, you could leave them, you could trim them. Either way, I'm going to go ahead and trim them off because they're sticking up just a little too high for my taste. When you're cutting really little bits like this, it's best to put something over it like I am doing with my finger to make sure that those little bits don't go flying off everywhere because they can and will fly into your eye. out okay so now we have our variable resistors in um, the last solderable piece is the battery connector now one thing I will note is that this um, can take instead an SAO connector I don't provide an SAO connector with the kit but if you have one you want to use it as an add-on instead of a clip-on go ahead and use that instead but for this um, tutorial we're gonna use the CR2032 coin cell battery holder and um, it could be put in the opposite way if you're not careful look at the diagram and you can see where the edge needs to go and if you do it that way you have the right polarity and once again this goes on the back we're gonna solder the pins on the front in there they look good I want to go ahead and trim them a little bit yeah nice okay so now we got the LEDs <laughs> I said this was the last part I meant before the LEDs um, so the green one we're gonna do first and once again, we want to line up our um, flat side, which is the short leg, with where it says to put the flat side. Now, on this one, other, uh, unlike the other badge, there's not really a line that you can see, but you'll see a little triangle with the tip of the triangle pointing towards this square peg. That square peg is where we want to put that short leg. And so we'll go ahead and put him in there. And I'm just going to be honest, I screwed up. I should have put these LEDs in before um, before we put in these resistors. It would have been easier to solder. But I'm going to solder it the hard way, but learn from my mistake and do the LEDs before the resistors, uh, the variable resistors, because this will make it a little harder to get to. And so this one has a flat side um, here, and it actually has a line that tells us which way that goes. So we're going to line that up and put it in there. Yeah, I got to going fast. I thought I already did these, and lo and behold, two left. But that's all right. No harm, no foul. We're just going to have to be careful getting in here. So this green one, we want to be careful not to touch the iron to the variable resistors because these are all plastic on top, and they will melt and stink and might not work right afterwards turning. Don't ask me how I know that. Let's just say this is not the first time I've made this particular error. All right, let's get the other guy. All right, those two legs are done. And then this one we're gonna do just like we did the other one. We're gonna, we have pads that are close together, so we're gonna hit them one pad at a time and just kind of very slightly touch the solder in there a bit at a time until we get just enough to cover the pad. Alright, 
now I think we're done with the soldered parts. So yes, that turned out good, that turned out good. Let's trim our leads and move on to testing. So we can put the flower and the brooch on in just a minute. Before I do that, I want to test that my circuit's working, just like we did with the other one. We're going to put our battery in. Turn it on. And we have light on both LEDs, which is good. So we don't have anything to fix. So now pop the battery out. I guess I could leave it in, doesn't matter. Because um, all we're doing now is screwing. So we have this little bag of screws. And this one we have the um, two with the pointy ends, or self-tapping screws are for the flower. And then we have these two um, pan head screws with nuts that are gonna be for the brooch clip. So for the brooch clip, I'm gonna unclip the brooch clip and move that pin out of the way to expose its two holes, which should match up perfectly to the two drill holes on the PCB that are going side to side. And then we will drop one of these screws in. holding it down with a screwdriver, put the hex nut on the end, and drop and lose the hex nut. <laughs> no, no, yeah. I saw where it went. I'll bend down to get it in a second. So I'm just trying to get it started finger tight on that. All right, so still nice and loose. Let me get the hex nut I dropped. And we'll do the other one. So we want it nice and loose, that way we can put the second screw in without fighting with the resistance for the from the first screw and then come on get on the thread there we go or maybe not you're just spinning around Okay, here we go. Yeah, these tiny screws are a pain to deal with, but they work better than glue or adhesive. So, so at this point, I'm going to tighten up both screws because they're both in there. Use a plier on one side and the screwdriver on the other. And once they're tight, we can close the pin. Now we put on our flower, and we're going to do that the same way we did on the corsage. We put the first screw on the lower hole, which is going to screw into the middle part of the flower, right there. And then the top one should line up with the top hole in the flower.
So should was the key word there. <laughs> this one is not wanting to cooperate with me. I think I got it. There we go. And now we have a completed boutonniere. And the boutonniere on the back, we can make it red, or we can make it green, or we can make it blue, or some combination thereof. Let's make this one a nice purplish color, or maybe pink. But yeah, simply by adjusting these screws is how we're changing the color. And we turn it off and that is it. With that, we now have a complete corsage and boutonniere which can be pinned on to your, your clothing all fully built and took about 90 minutes for me to to walk through this presentation so assuming you've never done this before that might be about the time it takes you maybe a little less maybe a little more um, but yeah hopefully someone finds this video helpful as they build the badge kits and uh, we'll have lots of them to give away or sell at um, various um, events leading up to DEF, DEF CON and at DEF CON itself. So um, once again, this is Alt Beer. Um, thank you for watching this video and uh, I'm sure we'll be posting more soon. Talk to you all later. Bye.